I can't believe he's done this. Why would Mossbag lie to us? Why would he do that? I literally just got done crying. And I'm about to start again. All this time, I was under the assumption that I could trust him. I even had Mossbag's shrine in my office. What a waste. All for nothing. Just thinking about it is making me angry. Hello everybody, my name is Trimacon and we're gonna go over a crazy silk song lore theory today. That's right, I make lore videos now. Can you keep up? Recently, I made a video ranking every area in Hollow Knight. And my top number one spot in that area was this mechanical clock tower that we've been talking about, or so we've been calling it, all this time. I mentioned in that video how I really like the mechanical aspects of it, and how it's gonna be my most anticipated area of Silk Song. And that video was referencing Mossbag's video where he mapped out the whole world of Hollow Knight. And he called it a clock tower, so I called it a clock tower. Fool! I was such a fool for believing in such misinformation. With that dramatic intro out of the way, let's get into what I'm talking about. The mechanical area has so far been considered by the Hollow Knight Silksong community to be a clock tower, and I want to play a little clip of what Mossback's video said about it. In this model, we can actually see a few tall towers on either side of the city. We don't know what these towers are, but one possibility is that one of them is the clock tower level we've seen a few times. This clock tower is probably the driving force of Farloom's productivity. Fool! That's what I say! Anyway, one of my fellow subscribers reached out to me with a really really good theory about the said clock tower. And this video wouldn't be possible without them, so the whole credit of this entire video goes to this person. And just to be sure, I went back to the Silk Song wiki to check out the areas again, and they have a section which says these areas have no names or any clear indication of a connection with the previous ones. So officially, these areas have not been named or confirmed by Team Cherry yet as of making this video. And one of the screenshots is the said clock tower area, as you can see right here. The wiki just calls it Silk Song Early 015, so officially it doesn't have a name. And I have a really, really good theory about this. Now, the simplest explanation of why everyone would be inclined, including me, to believe it a clock tower at first glance is because it looks like a clock tower. Who would have fucking thought? But how could you be so foolish? If you look at this screenshot of Hornet fighting the little flying bugs in the said clock tower, you can see a kind of a structure behind her. These little cylindrical structures seem to have little protrusions coming out of them at uneven spots. Now, does that remind you all of a little something? That's right. A drum. And no, not the kind of drum you grab your sticks and go fucking nuts to butts on. I mean a drum from a music box. If you look really closely, the drum structures behind Hornet in the said clock tower resemble very closely to a music box. And thematically, in my opinion, that makes a lot more sense. It's a game about Silk Song. Huh. Now Team Cherry, before you send Leth after me, I'm just gonna make a little wild assumption over here really really quickly. Song is gonna play a major role in Silk Song. And then the fact that this level is really close to the Citadel, combined with the fact that it resembles a music box, and how prevalent Song is in Silk Song, leads me to believe that instead of a clock tower, we are inside a giant music box. Music box also work on cog wheels and mechanical parts. You wind them up and they play you a beautiful melody. <laughs> Now to add a little bit more to this theory, let's talk about pipes. That's right, let's first see what Mossbag has to say in his video about it, because I believe that's a very good starting off point to continue this theory. But there's something the Citadel is up to that we should talk about, and that's these pipes. These things are so weird. What's inside them? Why do some of them taper off like this? Why did Team Cherry change the scene between the two trailers to remove the threads of silk in the room? Clearly there's something between the top of the citadel and the bottom of the citadel that these pipes help transfer. So maybe it's silk? The reason these pipes exist so much in the citadel, the reason they remove the silk coming out of those pipes, it's not because they transfer silk, it's because they're organ pipes. Just the way the clock tower is a music box, I have very strong reason to believe that these pipes are actual organ pipes. They converge on top on the ball that's the symbol shown everywhere throughout Farloon and it could be found at the very top of the citadel 
If you guys remember from the Edge Magazine interview that Team Cherry did, they said that Hornet's journey does not end at the Citadel. This shot, I believe, takes place at the top of the Citadel, as you can see the big ball of silk behind it. All the pipes seem to be converging to this big ball, which seems to be the source of all the music in Silk Song. Which is very poetic that at the end of the Citadel, when you reach the top, you finally find the source of all the song that's been haunting the kingdom. And one theory is that when you do fight Trobio in that arena, you will hear organ music coming through those pipes, which will work very well as a boss team. Dialogue from the Forge Daughter indicates that all the bell dudes in the city, they're no good for conversation anymore. It's almost like they're under a trance, a spell. And if you notice, the pipes can be seen throughout Farloom, mainly in the Bell City, but even in remote areas you can see little pipes scattered here and there. My theory is that the song propagates from the top of the citadel, through that ball of silk and it goes all the way down to the city, to the kingdom, through those pipes and puts these bugs in its trance. In a lot of media and a lot of movies, we usually see music being used to hypnotize someone. Like that small known and very obscure piece of media, Harry Potter. Does it seem a bit... quiet to you? The hall. It stopped playing. So it seems that all the bugs in the kingdom are put in a trance and being controlled by the citadel through this song. It's a song of silk because the song comes from a big ball of silk and they need that silk to keep producing their silk song that keeps the whole kingdom in their control. They're being put to work mindlessly like getting all the coal, sending it up to the citadel, keeping the propaganda alive. Why is that propaganda a thing? What's the end goal of whoever's perpetrating this whole plan? We don't know yet, and I'm very excited to find out when the game does come out in 2077. So I think the main takeaway here is they need the silk to produce the song that requires them to control the kingdom, hence why they're capturing all the weavers and making them produce silk for them. Now, assuming Silk Song is a sequel and not a prequel to Hollow Knight, it would make me believe that after the weavers left from Deep Nest back in Hollow Nest because of the infection spread, they went back to their home Farloom. And once they arrived, an external power came to Farloom just like Pale King came to Hallanest and they took control and captured the Weavers. Now where does Hornet come into all of this? Well A, maybe they needed Hornet because Hornet, mind you, is a demigod. Maybe they needed that final piece of the puzzle to fulfill whatever their plan is. Because Hornet is next level compared to all the other Weavers because she is the daughter of the Pale King. That's my first theory. My second theory is that the Weavers somehow were able to send an SOS signal to Hornet, a call for help, that her people are captured. So Hornet was on her way to liberate the kingdom, but someone leaked information and got Hornet captured. I don't know how they were ever able to capture the Hornet. Seems very very crazy that they were able to capture her. That's one part of the lore that I'm really bamboozled by. I know that her powers didn't work because there was some sort of seal of binding over her that was broken up by that little pale bug. But even then, how did they ever get her in the cage to put that seal of binding in the first place? Oh. But as I understand it, the song is clearly not working on everyone. Maybe that's why they need Hornet to make their strong so powerful that it influences the whole kingdom. For example, the ant tribe seems to be completely unaffected by the song and they're operating under the Queen Camelita. And don't forget, this is a direct parallel to the Mantis tribe from the first game where the Mantis tribes were strong enough to resist the infection of the Radiance and stay completely fine minus the one traitor lord who took in the infection willingly. There's also the sect of Lace and her group because Lace is also not affected by Silk Song. That's clearly indicated in their dialogue before their first fight. In fact, Lace seems to be working against the power that's trying to capture Farloom because she wants to kill Hornet. She realizes that Hornet is a very important piece, she's a spider, and the people in charge want to capture her to further their propaganda. Lace seems to be working against them, and she tries to kill Hornet to save Farloom. This leads me to believe that later down the game, Hornet and Lace will become friends or team up against whatever power lies beyond the Citadel. Again, this is very very reminiscent of how originally the Hornet tries to kill the Knight, but later develops a respect for the Knight and its power and tries to help it by leading it to the cast off shell. In the demo you can see Hornet passing out from exhaustion in front of the weird shaman looking dude who teaches Hornet how to play her needle. One theory I have is that she's basically teaching Hornet songs to counter the Silk song that's been played by the Citadel. Maybe Hornet can use her needle to play a song that counters the Silk song 
and liberate some important people in Farloom. This could be very similar to how we wake up the dreamers in Hollow Knight in order to progress the story. Again, that's just a complete theory on my part. If you look at one of the old animations that Ari Gibson did, it's called the Cat Piano. This piece of animation was directed by Ari Gibson, who is one of the core members of Team Cherry. The animation follows this little society of cats who love to sing and they're taken over by a malicious power who uses their song against them. That sounds very familiar to what they're doing in Silk Song. So to bring it all together and conclude my theory about Silk Song's lore, Varloom was a kingdom all about song and it was taken over by some malicious power that we don't know about. They took control of the citadel that's considered a holy ground in Varloom and started using silk to make their own song that's traveled through the pipes which are organ pipes down the city all the way to the bugs of Varloom and they put those bugs in its trance and have them do their bidding. Hornet was either called to Farloom or directly captured from Halonest as a key piece to this whole puzzle because Hornet is a deity, she's a demigod and maybe the conquerors of Farloom needed that demigod power to fulfill their plans and it's gonna be up to us to liberate Farloom from this evil power. What do you guys think of this theory? Again, I would just like to say that all of this is just a theory. Do you think I'm right about the clock tower being a music box? Do you think this video will finally bring Mossbag out of hiding so he can debunk my whole video and end my career? Let me know down below in the comments. Like this video, it really helps it reach more people. And subscribe to the channel to support your boy. I'll see you guys soon with a new one. Primicon out.